Hello and welcome to the Banta Blitz show. I hope you're all fine and watched um, an interesting match. I did not uh, watch uh, the Shugirov uh, Robson match in its entirety, only the last couple of minutes. Let me close the door, at least close to close to close it. And um, yeah, now let's get rolling and uh, go to the game window. I'm still on that page uh, where the match happened. So let's go for a game. I hope the yeah, it looks it looks fine. So now let's get started. Before I let me put out one move against the juicy, the juicy, and uh, also make sure that I have the um, the chat, all the chats open, the YouTube chat, the Twitch chat, the Facebook chat. And the chess 24 chat, which I read with um, pri pri priority, rup, difficult word. Um, but I also pay attention to the other to the other streams if there are messages or questions. Now we have a kettle on, on the board against the juicy, and now d takes c4 is the main move but you also see the close catalan with c6 and um, now let's see how black handles this b6 is probably best here and uh, now let's see how he goes about this you can take on c4 or e4 play bishop b7 play bishop a6 and so on Well, there's a Facebook post saying by Michael, he, he says uh, that I taught him chess. Hmm. I'm not sure that this is true. At least not in its entirety, of course. <clears throat> I don't know many people who actually showed the rules and everything. Now, um, white is a bit better here because the bishop on b7 is not so easily activated. c5, I take on c5 and the rook and queen are a problem on the d-file. And in general, black's position lacks a bit of activity. So we'll see what his idea is now. You quite often see moves like queen c7 in this position after which bishop f4 is the normal reply. But uh, you never know, there are many possible waiting moves that black may play, h6, rook e8. He should try for c5 in some way, but it is absolutely not obvious how this should be accomplished. Yeah, this is not a bad move. Um, however, it does not really prepare c5 as I can answer it with d5. The bishop on e7 is unprotected. Um, I have an idea. I'm not sure if it is a good one, but I'm still going to go for that. Still preventing <clears throat> the move c5 because then a d5 will be very strong using the pin on the h3 c8 diagonal. Okay, so Michael says he has followed my YouTube channel from the get-go and King, King's Crushes. Yeah, we were one of the first people um, doing chess on YouTube. That's absolutely true. In 2011, my channel turns nine, <laughs> nine this year. Okay. Um... Interesting. Knight h5 is not a move that looks very trustworthy, but how do we handle it? Even bishop g5 is not particularly bad. Not sure about it. Let's go bishop g5. I can also, I could go back and even uh, 
more tactical solutions. I was referring to YouTube channels, <laughs> John. Yeah, Robson lost that match pretty uh, clearly. Um, maybe he had um, time management issues. That is sometimes uh, a problem for him. Okay, now I was thinking knight e5 now, which attacks h5. It goes back. And now I thought c5. Yeah, Sugirov was too fast. I have not watched Sugirov, probably a very odd way to pronounce it or pronounce him. I have not seen him play at all, but he will face Carlsen, I guess, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And this will be. Um, in some way a grudge match, yeah, because um, Magnus lost one fairly well-known game against Shugirov in the 2014 Olympiad in Tremso on Magnus's home turf, so to say. I think I'm right with this, 2014 it was. Yeah, Magnus is of course the heavy favorite. The only player he's not a heavy favorite against is Firuzja. And uh, I guess we um, are pretty much uh, almost all of us <laughs> looking forward to that match, even though it is not um, a complete certainty that Firuzja will win against um, Georg Meyer, because Meyer has already surprised us against Duda, being an outsider in this match, and still he uh, won it, and not by a small margin. So I know that Firuja is uh, stronger than Duda, but still, it's not uh, totally clear everything. I wonder if I should take on d5. It's a bit of an odd decision. No, I never played Irina Crush. Did she start Blitz videos a few weeks ago? I mean, like on a YouTube channel or um, somewhere? I mean, I know that she did. Ah, it was in 2010 that Magnus lost the game. Okay, so I'm sorry. Then I was uh, confusing this. Um, yeah, I wanted to go into. Yeah, not I didn't do this well. I mean, the ending is better for white, but it's not nothing special, probably. Yeah, she did a banter blitz, which I which I saw, and it was uh, was good. I hope she's recovering well from her COVID nineteen illness. I think she she does. I mean, what she posted on Facebook sounded like she's on the way to recovery. Okay. Um, Now, how do we win this besides flagging? <laughs> Let's see. Um, the knight on b4 does make some sense, but it doesn't attack much. Let's put up a bit of pressure on the king's side. Still not obvious how I'm winning this position. I 
that was my idea. I wanted to make him move this. I cannot cannot easily win it simply. Wow, nice defense. Wow, yeah, he, he, he held up well, yeah, being bad the whole time. Probably taking on d5 was too simplistic. Too simplistic. Yeah, thanks for the game, the juicy. I was kind of relaxing a little bit because I knew that the time was on my side. Okay, now, um, Kobayad, Kobayitu. Wow, tough, 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 not. Tough, tough, tough names. Tough names for me. Um, interesting. Schachpirat CH or Schachpirat Switzerland. I don't know if that's, that's the what, what it stands for. Yes, it does. Um, he says that chessable seems a little weird for a player grown up with chess base. Um, you know what? I, I understand what you're saying. Um, and um, I think that um, given my my background is um, I can tell you my background. I um, am one of the chess base users of the absolute um, first generation. I got chess base version one one on an Atari ST. The IT veterans will have an idea what that means. That was in 1988, and um, so I used chess base my whole chess playing uh, career. I always find career a little bit uh, pompous for for an IM. But anyway, so I, I use chess base my whole life. And um, if you're used to that, um, looking at uh, and using chessable seems odd. I completely understand. But what you have to do is you have to simply um, like for the moment accept the platform for what it is and try it out because the results are really excellent this is what i learned by just trying it out i learned my own repertoires and um it, it sounds uh, a bit odd but because i should know my repertoire because I've, I've 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 written them but this is not a given you have to repeat stuff to keep them keep that in mind what you actually have written and it works it just works. What I um, do is often, um, if I prepare for the video recording of my repertoires, I actually use the Chessable course and learn it again. Even though I've written it, it is just very, very good for the, yeah, for the, let's say, the, the fluency. Is that a word? Fluency? You know, so that the presentation is fluid. Um, it, it makes a lot of sense, not fluid, fluent, fluent, uh, let's get there. Uh, it is very much um, advisable to know this stuff inside out. And if you do the chessable repetitions and look at this all over again and again and again, then you know it, you really do. I also used um, a chessable for my league game preparation and um, it works. I had a game in uh, late 2018, right around when um, I was just uh, about to finish my repertoire, um, the black repertoire based on the Petrov according to Caruana. I had to play a game in my uh, in the league um, against a, a strong uh, German grandmaster and uh, I saw that he played a particular line of the oops against the Petrov. So I picked up this chapter in Chessable and uh, did a full repetition of that chapter right before the game, or um, let's say on the morning um, before the game. And um, I absolutely knew everything inside out. And actually, fairly uh, early in the game, he made a he made a, a move order a glitch and I easily uh, equalized and made a draw, which is very much okay against the player who earlier was um, like uh, the German number two or number one at some point. So it was, um, and that was um, not a bad result at all to be completely equal and make a draw. So,
so um now let's see what's going on here i have to focus on that game i want to i want a pawn and the position looks good but it still has to be converted into a full point bishop a6 might be the thing I don't know. There's a question if a teacher um, or coach all through my chess playing career would have helped me to make grand, a grand uh, to make uh, make it to a grandmaster. This is always super difficult to say. Um, I think that during my time when I had a full time office job, um, I was not really. Um, I was always playing chess and studying chess a little bit, but not with um, the amount of uh, dedication and uh, precision that you need to get to a grandmaster uh, level. Um, if I would have would have had this dedication, maybe there were some opportunities, but um, in general, I, I lack quite a bit to get there, and uh, it would have been long uh, long road to travel let's say not just like get a coach and then it's done okay thanks for the game uh caballito yeah i didn't really talk much about the game um i was winning a pawn early on but because i was uh yeah telling you about how you can use the the chessable way of learning it's really a little bit odd at first i think okay well, why where do i have to do this but it, it just works it's one of those things that you have to try out and experience and then you see okay this actually does work okay playing evans didn't mangus play the evans gambit recently on stream I didn't play the scotch, but yeah, let's play my old scotch antidote with bishop b4 check and bishop c5. This is not the best line ever, but also not the worst. This is the kind of chess commentary we all love. Oh, he knows his stuff. White is a bit better here. At least a bit better. Queen e7 is probably not even the right decision here. White is um, better anyway here with this Maroxy bind. This is one of the best lines against the bishop b4 check variation. Bishop b4 check is a line that I learned um, many years ago um, as some offbeatish way to play against the Scotch and um, as I said, it is not completely terrible, but it's also not great. And the setup that White is playing here is definitely a good one. Mm, I don't like it. Not at all. Yeah, he's only rated uh, with all due with all due respect 1500 but um, has played this very well how do we ever get some counter play here i don't know i really don't know probably the main idea here is uh, is to flag him <laughs> i don't know <laughs> it just it's just not fun at all okay let's go back there maybe i can initiate a little bit of counterplay against the a pawn <laughs> What an ugly game, what an ugly position. Pr 
pretty pretty bad yeah the d6 pawn is just one problem Ugh. yeah yeah of course he is playing this uh, very very well so of course typical 1500 play so phew, it's got knight g4 also coming yeah. Phew. What an awful position. Maybe queen to <clears throat> b6, that was my idea. This one, maybe I can trade queens at least. The position still sucks, of course, but. Yeah, this is like. The old Pearl Jam song from 1993 or something. I'm still alive. Yeah, I should have done that differently. Uh, I could have also gotten an ending with equal material, which was, of course, hugely preferable. Thirty seven seconds for him. time trouble move it's just a pawn up I mean of course it's a draw but now I'm probably even getting flagged <sighs> it's going to be draw wow wow the 1500s get stronger by the day eh? learn chess on chess 24 eh? and you are super strong Woo, okay. Yeah, thanks for the game, Evans. Um, okay, um, let's go for the next one. Who do we have? Ruben Zalimu from Zimbabwe, that's cool. So let's mix it up a little bit. Let's go for different first moves. Play a bit of the English opening. Ruben Zalimu. Where did I lose my points? <laughs> I always wonder. I was close to 2800 again a while back, and then, uh, yeah, down again. So, yeah, got him. I got a um, interesting position here out of the reversed dragon. D4, I try to I try to make use of the fact that the D pawn um, did not 
not move yet. Had not moved yet. Okay, five. How do we play? I can go queen a4 and the bishop will drop back all the way to f7. Hmm, it's a tough call. Yeah, I'm just going to play this one. The bishop will have to retreat probably anyway, and um, queen on a4, I'm not sure what it is doing exactly. Um, now. Now, I don't think Irina Crush is regularly streaming on Twitch. I I really monitor the Twitch streams uh, quite a bit recently, and I have never seen her on. I mean, maybe she wanted to start or so, but she didn't stream, I mean, understandably, given the health issues, if, uh, if she has a channel at all. But um, I think we will see more and more Twitch um, channels coming because um, with the um, imminent lockdown, we have so many chess players that don't have uh, or who um, are looking for new income streams. So um, we will see more of that. We already do. If you look at uh, Twitch, we have so many new Twitch channels coming and interesting ones coming. Yeah, that was not so great. Yeah, me allowing all this. Shouldn't have allowed it in this way, c6. a5 is attacked, but I also attack b7. I probably should have played a6 before. Hmm. Yeah, now I can take b7. I think I will do that. Yeah, and now what? I thought knight d6 could be good here. Going for a pretty huge fork. I still threaten to take on f7. That's a pretty annoying idea. They have to make sure that I'm somewhat staying, <laughs> staying um, observant about the time that I'm not forgetting that this is a non-increment game. Why well, is taking too long? Eh? How is he ever going to make the time control? The time control is, of course, nonsense, but I, I think you understand what I mean. How is he ever not going to lose on time is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and this will be the end of it, because I can simply take f7. Mm, yeah. Yeah, thanks for the game, Ruben Zalimu. Let's go for the next game. And as far as I understood in the chat, there is a new premium member in there that I have not played before. That's exactly true. Vladalak, Vlad, Vlad, something. <laughs> uh, let's go. There's a question by Earth Spectre. How do I prepare for tournament games? Um that actually depends a little bit on the opponent. I usually only start the day before uh, if it's a league game, right? This is the, the most common. Why can I not take now? Is 
Is that still a huge issue there with Node B5? Okay, let's not spend more time. Um, usually it is a leaky game and I'm going to um, usually start the day before and uh, I, 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 just, I have a look at my opponent's games. In some, um, in some cases, um, these games are basically repeating every single year because if you play in a, in, in a league for the same team and you meet um, a couple of the teams that you meet are the same every year, then you're going to play the same people. So in some cases, you know what you're going to get because you um, hmm, prepared, prepared the year before, something like that. I would um, still look at the games of the opponent and uh, try to form an opinion what kind of player he is, if, I know, if I'm not already knowing that from earlier games. Um, what I would also do, as I already said before, if I expect some line to happen from one of my repertoires, and this is on Chessable, I will do a repetition on Chessable of the chapter or chapters that I expect to happen. It depends largely on the opponent and what I expect to, to happen. Also on the color, of course, if, I, if I'm white, I'm fairly flexible. I can play all the first moves. So um, I have to make a, a judgment call what I want to do. e4, d4, c4, knight f3, everything possible. Um, even though um, e4 is more of a special occasions thing because this is um, something that I only really learned while writing my Keep It Simple E4 repertoire. And um, this is um, something where I want to play it in cases where I'm very sure what I'm going to get. What my opponent is playing is kind of predictable because the position types are um, not the ones that I have played all my life and it's um, a special a special occasion thing. Okay, now in this game, I feel um, the position should be rather equal. Don't think there's an advantage for either side. Bishop h4 maybe for him. It's a bit annoying actually. I don't want, of course, a double pawn and I don't have a good square to go to. Yeah, he might, he might um, get a bit, get a bit of play here. Ninety five. Yeah. Okay. Let's take it. Maybe this one for tempo, basically. I don't think he wants me to take on g3 and giving him a double pawn. But that is not so clear. It's centralized. I started to play chess only at age 12. That was, uh, was late was even late back then and by modern standards it's it's really late for a younger player. I should have played knight a4 of course. That was a stupid decision. It's not um, in the end of the world but still. No, you cannot get to top level uh, when you start at age 20. If you mean like world class, uh, wow, I'm going to lose on time here. That's not possible, it's too late. You can still become a good player, but not a uh, um, a top level player.
yeah it's just dead but okay you lose on time that's what it is reaching grandmaster starting age 20 is almost impossible it's um very very unlikely let's say okay so we have uh, gm jojo yo yo I don't think um, um, I don't think uh, there is a grandmaster uh, around who started at age twenty. I think you get people who started, uh, let's say, um, like age fifteen or so. I think Uwe, for example, got, of course, to world champion, and he started also fairly late. Um, but um, I don't think there is an example of somebody getting, getting really, really strong starting that late. No, I never had a coach. Of course, I worked a lot with my teammates. So there have been many, let's say, training sessions in a way, but I never really had one person helping me with my game. So a Meroxy bind here on the black side, not something that I have on the board often, but I have some experience also with this opening from Black's point of view. And uh, I was just uh, telling like, a story <laughs> which oftentimes leads to opening plays that are not quite standard because I'm kind of yeah, telling stuff and then I wonder, hmm, why did I go for that? Um, cover the e-pawn. Yeah, so I wanted to tempt him to move forward. No, 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 this is this is just not happening. There is no 2700 player who started at age 21. That's simply not true. I mean, give me the name. I don't think this has uh, ever happened. So try trading this one, and uh, if he takes it, rook takes. I'm going to attack those pawns. White well, did well, absolutely, no problem whatsoever. Okay, and take. And then wait on the second. No, Wojtaszek didn't start age 21. Sorry, that's just wrong. This is just wrong information. Not sure where you get it from. Okay, so this is a tempo. And um, b6, I'm going to stop c5. I can take everything and then play rook a1. That would win. It wouldn't win the bishop. Oh, wait. Hmm, okay. 
That's not what I wanted. B4, B3. I have to focus a bit on the game. I don't want to make um, make totally stupid mistakes here. Yeah. Yeah, he's not threatening to take, but I don't see how I'm making any headway in this position. Oh. I don't see it. He can go king g1 next and then start try to pick up the pawn. Maybe I <clears throat> played this too. Um, yeah. Trying too hard to avoid a draw. I don't even see how I can make a draw. I can play rook b8, of course, but. Just King G1 is good, I think. It's not even clear how I can make a draw in this position. It's absolutely not clear. Rook b8, c6 is not a draw. That's extremely annoying, really. Yeah, I'm just just a pawn down for nothing. I didn't want want the clean draw, but maybe I should have taken that. But who wants to draw if you're like a one thousand point favorite? Well, that doesn't mean so much as it's as it turns out. Going King G5, or what is he doing? With absolutely no time, as you not pre move, please. 
H5. No. And now he's playing some strange moves. Still, still not winning or anything for me. Yeah, that was strange. That was strange, really. I didn't didn't play this well at all. Yeah, I mean, I can draw, of course, after c5, but maybe I have to do that. What I didn't see beforehand when I when I when I allowed the whole thing is um, that here he can simply do this because bishop b5 was not working. So yeah, thanks for the game, GM Jojo. Um, now there is d4 d5 c4 e6 premium account that I have never played before. Let's roll d4, d5, c4, e6. Yeah, this I had recommended in my old Nimse Burger book. I'm still playing it quite a bit in Blitz Chess because the resulting positions are often fairly simple for black to play. You often get those um, closed center positions and if you know the maneuvers well then you can often play um, yeah, many moves quickly which is of course a good thing in blitz. White has this double pawn and the way it looks like he's not going to get rid of it anytime soon. The question is how to exactly play it. This is a little bit uncommon, but um, I don't have a maneuver with the knight to a5. Often can you can play knight a5, bishop a6, putting pressure against c4, but that's not happening here and therefore Bishop uh, g4 is not a bad choice. Now, knight e4 maybe. He wants to go f4. You can also do this. Preventing f4 wouldn't be so bad. Who's the best player who plays the French? Um, that is a good question. French defense is very rarely seen at top level. I just wonder who's going to, who's playing it anyway, at least sometimes. In the candidates tournament, we saw some games by Jan Nep Nepomniachi, Nepo. And, um, he certainly has put in some serious um, preparation into, into this opening. But I'm not sure that he plays it that often in other cases. He's more of a Nidorf player, as I thought. Yeah, Morosevich um, comes to mind, but he's basically retired from chess for um, quite a while now, so I don't think he would count. Very good French player who is not world class but still very strong. It's actually German player Georg Meyer. He has his own interpretation of the 
French, often playing the Rubinstein variation with the capture on e4. And we saw that that um, Duda in his Benta Blitz match had absolutely nothing against this. And strangely enough, it also looked like he didn't prepare anything in particular. That uh, I was quite surprised about. Because you know that uh, Georg is going to play the Rubinstein. It's his... Uh, his um, yeah, his go-to opening forever, like ever, and uh, therefore it was quite surprising that he did not have anything particular in store. It took me a while to figure out that queen takes e4 will come with a check, which is very important. And I will win on time. Yeah, thanks for the game. D4, D5, C4, E6. Okay, now I got a challenge by Ares Dvovk. We had some fun games, or Orest Wofk, I'm sorry. Uh, hello? I actually have to click on accept. And he's going for g4, right? I think he's making a point of doing this every game. And somehow I got black every time, which is a bit, uh, a bit odd. Okay, so... So interesting there by Jaden McGuinness. This is a very smallish chat window. And he said he just started playing chess. Never to start. Uh, never too late to start. I, I really hope that um, one of the very few and in comparison, of course, minor things that come out, out of this uh, coronavirus situation is that more people um, pick up chess as an interesting way to spend time, as an intellectually interesting activity that you can can do at home. Yeah, there's actually more that you can do at home than like watching TV and uh, and um, and I don't know. Yeah, eat junk food. <laughs> okay, now let's see. He's played this in a very strange way, really. How do we do this? Um, the knight on e7 is not good, so I'm going to improve it. c5, knight c64, I guess. I don't know, g4, d5 is fine. But against g4, black can get a pretty huge advantage with, uh, with many moves, actually. So I'm a pawn up, so I don't mind. Um, I don't mind giving up c7. So it's a real, really time-consuming pawn grab. So knight. Oops. To come on to b4. <laughs> That's how we go. The light squares are very weak after he has taken. Yeah, the grope is really a bad opening. And there are many ways for black to be better. You probably um, cannot like win immediately. That's not going to happen. But I think one g4 is a move that if we get this, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not a computer specialist, but if we get this kind of monster computer that solves chess, it will show you that one g4 doesn't doesn't work. In comparison, for example, one h4 is also crap, but sorry, uh, um, <clears throat> it's not good. 
um, but it's better than g4 or a3 and h3 is even halfway sensible at least you're not weakening everything okay a uh, grope was a very interesting colorful person he was married i think eight times and he had this funny quote that when uh, when a journalist asked him uh, Sir, are you married? And he said, almost always. That's a fantastic response. <laughs> almost always. Okay, now I'm, I'm drifting a little bit while telling stories. Move B3 is actually a bit annoying there. Okay. He just gives up the exchange. So d5, no, I need both rooks. This is just pretty clear. Okay, so I have to focus a little bit more on the game. I'd like to re-chat and, and everything with when we're getting closer to crunch time. A little bit more focus helps. Mm, didn't do this so well, really. Ah, rook d7, ah, super annoying. I threatened, like almost made there with rook a4. This is a, was a little trap. I hoped. I had check and check and made. I'm such a friggin. Ah. I mean, at least I win the house. Ah, come on! This is so idiotic. Losing against the grope. Unbelievable. Like you're winning from move one. That's great. Do I get a draw by some miracle? That's still terrible. Draw is terrible. Like you you you're winning after after 10 moves or something crazy okay thanks for the game orest wolfk i really don't know why you want to be lost after eight moves but uh, that's his choice okay now because it's like completely i mean like it's, it's it has this suicidal kind of kind of way <laughs> okay anyway um let's see who's on there uh mdm that's a new opponent. Let's play him. Got black again. Maybe I have to at one point just uh, yeah, play on this side for a couple of hours without streaming and like pump this rating up for 200 points. I really think it just has an, an effect here that I'm doing all the talking because um, I really feel that 2700 is far too low if you if I compare this to uh, many other players on the side okay uh, of course I have forgotten how this works Mm. Should do more chessable repetitions. <laughs> then I would know what I have written in the play like Magnus course. I don't think the handicap is that high. It was just estimated the handicap would be like 500 points. It is not that much, but 
there is a bit of a handicap. <sighs> Knight f4, I have completely forgotten the theory. Knight f4. Knight f4, bishop f7, I have completely forgotten everything. So, and this is the kind of position where you really should know stuff. Trying to figure it out over the board could prove fatal because it's just uh, entirely tactical. If I'm given time, I play rook g8, rook g5, and happily attack on the g file. But it's not going to happen. Probably one f uh, now f4 is a move that I would consider. F3 is of course quite similar. Yeah, let's line up on the G-Farm. I might give up a pawn there, but I want to be as active as possible. I cannot even take on e4 or play f4. Yeah, I always thought that I can do um, what I'm doing now, but this is not uh, a great solution. Did I say Schach? Let's check in German. So I fell back to German language. Oh. Yeah, I should really know my own stuff. It's still in the streaming setup. Fight like Magnus, Sicilian repertoire. I've written it. But it's like half a year ago. And that can be too much sometimes for my memory. This position is maybe not so bad, but it's not <laughs> what was originally intended. Check. Twenty three seconds, yeah, have to be really quick. Okay, I was quick enough and actually managed to pr promote that pawn. <laughs> okay, now, um, so who else is on that list there? Um, 
that anybody knew. We have a um, pretty it's also a new account with a good list of challenges here yeah, after the Robson Shugirov match. So I can do this pre move. Not so bad. No, no, not many people play 2b4, you know. So let's do this. Don't have any water. That's not so good. When did I start this stream actually? Was that 8.30? My time? 20, I think it was. So still quite a bit of stream time ahead. So we have transposed into um, a position that usually um, happens from a Sicilian. This time it was uh, 1d4. There is a there is a, a discussion currently in the in the chat how quarantine I would have said quarantine is to be pronounced is quarantine wrong I think quarantine is what I would do but it's not the the word you learn at school. And I saw it mostly written recently, not so much um, somebody saying it. I mean, many things have come to a complete standstill. Querel, quarantine, is querel, right? Quarantine, qu qu quarantine, quarantine. Okay. Uh, the this this uh, this is kind of t difficult for me. Oh, I got a congratulations message, but not because I did a correct pronunciation. <laughs> uh, but there were one hundred messages with restream chat. <laughs> I really have some uh, pronunciation problems. I know I have problems with Q's and I have um, problems with PR, like priority is a very difficult word for me. One thing I know though, is that the pin on the e-file is going to be very, very bad for white, very, very bad. You know, it's a huge pin, one of the hugest pins ever. Yeah, the E2 bishop will get lost. Yeah, he um, just opened up the position at an untimely moment, and that was very costly. Quarantine. Quarantine, okay. Quarrel, quarrel. Yeah, I probably need a voice teacher. Um, thanks for the game. Ach, adres, sem. I know this is also not right, but <laughs> what can we do? Um, okay, I got a challenge by uh, quarantine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need more practice, I guess. Now, Lucas Rahn is challenging me, and he's super high rated, 2,900, uh, 2,900 a lot, let's say. So I'm going to dash out some quick moves and hope that things go all right. Probably not the most intelligent intelligent square <laughs> for the queen. Uh, okay. And I, I wouldn't say that these are free rating points, but 
I mean, in general, um, it's better to have higher rated opponents if you want to uh, get your rating up a little bit, a little bit. I just try to stay somewhat competitive on the clock at the moment. And then we'll see. Okay. No. That was a good move. He's doing fine. He's doing fine there. Good. Um, he has done a good job here. Probably bishop takes. I would definitely like to put the knight to d5. That would make um, a very good impression there. Oh, I don't mind that at all, actually. So, okay, if I go knight uh, f4, then um, g5 might happen. Okay, this is not ideal. It's not a big deal. So, this one... This is a kind of game that I would often just lose on time because I'm not keeping up. And I just want to make sure that I'm not dropping too far behind. The position is probably about equal. Yeah, I'm a little bit, a little bit better actually. Let's go there. It's not anything special. Interesting move. This is a good one, I think. Didn't didn't see that before. And I'm falling behind on the clock, which I did not want to do. Could have gone f4 actually. Okay, so the position is not going to be the problem in this game. I know. Yeah, that was. He's, he's screening with check. What am I doing here? I, now I know how we got to 2950. <laughs> just play anything and then people play nonsense or what. 
Oh my god! <laughs> what a ridiculous play by me! Oh my god, that was like so utterly winning! Uh, crazy! Like crazy, yeah, but I, I cannot really handle these situations too well when we both have like 20 seconds. I just lost like one or two tempi. This is, um, I mean, before it was like completely winning, like this one. And, um, yeah. Yeah, probably just rook f6. That's that's the absolutely easiest one, probably. And, um, king c5. Why not this? Yeah, I know. I keep I keep losing um, complete control there. When? Why did I resign? Uh, well, why shouldn't I? <laughs> Uh, like being down everything yeah so um let's continue who else is challenging me the wild beast it's also a new um unknown account so I did start a bit later, right? I mean, the the intended starting time um, did not happen, right? I started a bit later, so we'll still do a little bit more. So the wild beast of all openings plays the Tarash. That's not very beasty in my book. It's a bit unusual, bishop e6. Okay. Let's see how he's playing this position. Black already has some problems um, keeping his uh, isolated pawn covered. I will go rook fd1, rook ac1. It's going to be difficult, actually. The way you play it is a little bit inaccurate. But if I get some rook ending, like that's totally winning with 20 seconds, it might not be enough. <laughs> it might not be enough. So what is he going to do? Bishop d7. Okay. Maybe I could have taken d5, but well. And now I will take d5. That's the best way to play against an IQP. Just take it. Okay. Yeah, that opening did not go too well for black. Immediately losing the IQP. So, yeah, I can move the knight somewhere for a pin and a trade, but it's not that convincing, I guess. I can grab another pawn. I mean, why not? He will probably give me even one more with rook b8 to just continue the game. Not exactly clear what black's move is. I'm threatening to move the knight simply and um, build a deadly pin on the bishop. So probably has to go something like rook b8. 
or queen e8. Just trying to find moves that don't this one. So knight e6 is of he's sacrificing the queen, right? Mm. No. Okay. Not sure if this even is even technically the best choice, but would be weird not to win the queen if that's is offered to you. Okay, um, this bishop is still fairly strong. Also, bishop d five coming. Would be really good to trade this bishop off. Um, if he takes. I, I absolutely have to use this rook at some point. How do we do this best? Rook c1 maybe? Yeah, this is technically not super easy. Really, really isn't. Uh, no, I don't have any book reviews planned simply because I don't buy books at the moment, really. I have no time to read anything. And um, it's um, it's just not really it doesn't really um, make much sense if you um, have nothing to to talk about. Yeah, I haven't um, gotten a book for a long time. So bishop d4, yeah, mm, I can still cover this. No particular reason to give up the e2 pawn. Uh, there's a new book, yeah, you probably uh, are talking about this book about chess swindles, right? By David uh, Smurden, is that the right word or the right pronunciation? Of course, I'm struggling with this. <laughs> so I'm getting a little bit of coordination now. And uh, the moment I trade the dark squared bishop, things get a little bit simpler. Yeah, this is already not ideal. I have some, some chances here for a fortress. New and chess yearbooks are always helpful, but therefore usually a fairly high level audience. So if you can get the, the Smurden book, which I don't know, but um, probably the the subject of ch chess swindles is a more universal one than what we, what you usually get in a yearbook. Yearbook is a very good theoretical uh, perio 
periodical. No, I'm not doing this right. <laughs> periodical? Period? Yes, probably. Yeah, thanks for the game, The Wild Beast. I'm not happy with... Uh, with um, Conversion. Maybe maybe 96 isn't actually the best way to play. That's really possible. I'm just two two pawns up and have good control in this position. And maybe I should win the queen there because I give up all the good pieces. Yeah, I give up the knight and so on. That is not not maybe the best way to play from a purely technical point of view. Okay, I'd like to play one more game, and I'm going to play against Aretha or Arethas. I'd have 1e4. I'm not sure if I played it already in the stream. I feel I had lots of black somehow. Played more d4, I think. Is she or he actually on? Not clear. Okay, I'd like to have one more game. Then play Violina 18. I had a mate, Queen D8. That sounds bad. <laughs> okay, I mean, it was a long day, but still. I should see mates in one. But at least um, at the end of the session, it seems like I get a Roxy bind. No. Well, th this you can try to punish with taking and queen d5, like win a pawn. But just d5 should be a really, really good Benoni. As b6 is a, an entirely pointless move. Okay. C takes is also good. Both uh, Benoni structures are somewhat favorable for white. Wow. Didn't expect that one. I think I can. I should first um, misplace the rook. I think it is misplaced on f5. I could be wrong. Not sure if it's really misplaced, but this position should be better for white in some kind of degree, by some kind of degree. Rook e7 now the threat, rook f7, knight g5, this look terrible. Just has some odd pieces. So let's put this bishop on the best diagonal. Um, do we actually benefit from setting up this battery? B3, bishop, b2, queen, c3. It looks nice, but it's not uh, clear that it actually helps. If I take on g7, yeah, yes, so take with the king. Queen 3, c3, check, king g8. There is no force to win, right? Hmm. That's a real shame. But maybe this is a bit quicker. Now I'm threatening to take twice and take d6. It's going to be a bit of a problem. Yeah, yes, this, but that's not 
a move you love to play. Still not clear how I how I win. So let's set up that Queen B3 style battery. I feel that I have missed something. It's really strange that I haven't found some kind of knockout. Cannot take, but I'm not. I've got this one also. And knight h4. <laughs> Where is the win? It should win, win, win some material at least. Yeah, that's a <laughs> bit of an invasion. <laughs> Now, where's the maid? Help! <laughs> ah, come on. It looked like there's a maid in one, yeah, and I don't see it. But, uh, this is definitely enough. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thanks for the game. Violin 18, or violin 18, I think it's probably right to do it in German. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the show. I had some pretty, pretty odd games, <laughs> but um, I hope it was still enjoyable and um, some fun to watch. I'll be um, actually back tomorrow with the German language show. If you also speak German, want to learn, or want to just um, experience how it sounds like if I do it in my... Um, mother tongue yeah, tune in tomorrow it will be 6 30 i think if i'm not mistaken and that will be right before the maya ferusia match thanks for watching bye bye